Welcome to Sakshi TV Special Immigration Show with lawyer Srinivas Kaveti from Kaveti Law Firm. Please note that Sakshi TV now has four immigration shows every week on Tuesday with lawyer Srinivas Kaveti, on Wednesdays with Mr. Prashanti Reddy in English, on Thursdays with Mr. Chan Parvat Neni, and on Fridays with Banu and Indra. Please tune in to ask your questions. If you are an immigration attorney and would like to join our special shows, please email us at usc at sakshi.com or call us at 822 before we begin the show, please note that the information provided on the show is not legal advice and for general informational purposes only. Sakshi TV or its agents will not be responsible for the use of information. If you need any personal information, you can definitely contact the attorney directly. Kaviti Law Firm needs no introduction, but if you need any consultation, you can log on to their firm. Uh, you can also contact Kaviti Garu for any personal information. So without any further delay, let's welcome him onto our show. Kaviti Garu, welcome back. Thank you, um, Shivan. Yes. Uh, so, Kaveti Garu, today we are discussing a very different topic. We're talking about the extensions of different uh, visas. So, before that, is there any new immigration updates that you want to say to the viewers? Yeah. Um, if you see the um, you know visas which they're issuing in terms of student visas, or work permits, and everything, even green cards, um, from past 2022 to 20, 2023, uh, they have increased uh, more than, um, I would say, 100% um, in terms of student visas, in terms of visitor visas, and in terms of even work permits. And um, the majority of countries they are showing more is one of the countries of Philippines and, uh, you know, Nigeria. So that's a, that's a good start. And, um, you know, they are trying to expedite uh, things. Uh, because of the COVID, there was a lot of backlog. And they're expediting a lot of uh, applications, so that's that's a good news actually. So what will happen, you know, if the if these applications are getting approved faster, that means, you know, green cards will move faster, you know, in employment and in um, you know through family and other categories. So that's the update. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Kaviti Garu, let's get on to our topic. Firstly, let's talk about a B1 and B2 visa. So, let's say somebody is on B1 and B2 and they're coming and visiting the country. For how long can they legally stay in the country? And if they want to do their extensions, how can they possibly do it? First of all, one must understand uh, what is a B1 and what is B2. Uh, B1 means um, it is one of the sections and that's what defined in immigration and Naturalization Act, um, B1 is issued for uh, businessmen and B2 is issued for tourists. I mean, if you're visiting family for social purposes. And when you see the label on uh, visa, it is either written B1 or oblique B2. That means if you're entering into the country, you can either enter into United States for business purposes or you can also visit America for tourism purposes. That means you're visiting your family or if you're coming to see the country, you know, like a tourist, holiday purposes. So at the port of entry, when you enter into the United States, see, most of us don't know that they think once the visa is granted by the embassy, they can just walk into U.S. The answer is no. At the port of entry, what does that mean when you're entering into the United States? the way you see an immigration officer in India or any foreign country, when you enter into the United States, you're going to meet an immigration officer. They're called border security officers. You're going to meet them and they're going to ask you why you came into the country. That is the first question they will ask you. So if you say that you're coming for a business, then they will ask you what purposes you're coming. Are you coming for meetings? How many meetings? So then they will stamp a B1. If you say that, no, I'm coming to visit a friend or I'm coming to see the country, you know, I just want to, uh, you know, uh, socialize myself. And then they would stamp a B2. Or typically, I mean, if you're coming for a business uh, visa, which is B1, they might um, issue, uh, a, a, you know, authorized stay. Not, not many people ask us, oh, I got a 10 years of B1, B2. Can I go and stay in America for 10 years? The answer is no. The port of entry officer, border security officers, determines how long you can stay. That's what they stamp on the passport. Sometimes they even stop stamping. You could check it up online. They will say that you can stay for six months. If you're coming in a business, maybe one or two months. 
So normally, a typically uh, B1, a tourism purposes, they will only give it for one month authorized stay. And two, if you want to stay more, if you say that I'm coming for a business and then I want to see my family, then they would give you a typically a, a B2. And that is given until uh, six months. So oh. anybody coming into the country, either one month, to, one month to six months, that is the period they can stay when they come into the country. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Kaviti Garu, how exactly can they, uh, can they, you know, extend their stay for more than six months? Are there any risks involved, uh, you know, if you're applying for an extension? There are no risks involved. Uh, one has to comply the law. See, most of the times when they come into the country, you know, most of the foreigners, they say, oh, can I get a job on a visit visa? The law says, uh, no, you can't. I think recently there was a, a newspaper and a TV shows in India saying, if you come to the United States on a B1, B2 visa, you can look for jobs. See, that is only a, 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 that what the television guys and newspaper guys says. That is not the law. See, the law means it has to be the way we uh, the law is passed in the parliament or assembly. Similar to that, the law has to be passed by the Congress and by the Senate in America. Once the law is passed, then they give it to the um, immigration under the delegated legislation and the legislation will, the delegated legislation, the USCIS will come up with certain rules. Um, the, the answer is very clear. When you come on a visit, you don't have a right to work. Um, if you work, uh, that means you're violating the law, immigration law. That means um, if anybody, um, you know, reports and if they catch you, you could be deported. So the uh, do's and don'ts, uh, can you attend any meetings on a business? The answer is yes. Can you look for some schools if you want to get admissions? The answer is yes. If you're soliciting business, if you're meetings, that's fine. Um, but you cannot legally work. And sometimes people ask questions, can I register a company when you're on a business? If you're on a business visa, B1, yes. But if you're on a tourism visa, no. Um, you know, there are certain do's and don'ts you have to follow when you come. Uh, typically, that's what you can do. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Srinivas Garu, let's move on to the F1 mm. visa, which is the student visa. Uh, so, let's say somebody uh, got their student visa and they studied for a year or two. Uh, how can they, um, you know, extend their stay on a student visa and how long can they typically uh, stay? So, first, first question is how long can a person with student visa uh, can stay? Because I'm sure a lot of our viewers who are going to USA, they watch our show and they're usually people who are on F1 visa. So can you enlighten them with some uh, important information here? Well, the first of all, one must understand uh, F1 visa is a student visa. So the law says they can work inside the campus and they can complete a course. They can, if they want, let's say if somebody is coming for a master's, and they complete one master's. And if they want to do a PhD, they can extend. So they don't have to go out of the country. Normally, uh, an F1 is granted for five years. And if somebody wants to extend more than five years, they can by just going to school. Sometimes people want to do postdoctorate, a doctorate and a postdoctorate. Um, they can extend their stay um, automatically. If you go to a school, they will report to the immigration they will give you an I-20, you can extend your stay more than five years. If you see many of students in America right now, those who are coming uh, to do their master's, when they apply for an H-1, even two to three times when they file their applications, uh, they don't get picked up, you know, in lottery. So what they're ending, they're ending up doing two masters and a doctorate even. So they're more than five, six years. This week, we had a couple of clients that were staying in the country for seven years. I asked them how come on an F1 seven years. They said, we applied for this uh, H1B three to four times, didn't pick up. So I'm pursuing uh, different masters. So pursuing different masters means you have to pay the school fees. You have to be in the classroom. Um, people are there for five to eight years, even 10 years sometimes. So there's, I would say there's no limit. Um, and uh, because you have to be enrolled in the school, you have to attend the classes, pay the school fees. That's all. You cannot work outside the campus. You can work inside the campus and you cannot run a business and, um, you know, you cannot do a lot of things. Uh, if you don't have a right to work, you cannot work. Sometimes people get a CPT, which is called curriculum practical training. 
and um, that has to be sponsored by an e-verified employer. They can work. And sometimes after a master's degree or doctorate degree, they, get, they, they do get a work authorization, which is called OPT. If they're doing a STEM program, they can work for three years. So other than that, uh, they can't. Sometimes uh, there's a beauty. Uh, sometimes there is a hardship. Let's say if a student has come to America and their family um, suddenly died because of COVID or anything, or they died with an accident, or their businesses have gone down. The father, mother, they filed a bankruptcy. They were uh, in a lawsuit. And the, the students who are in America, they can also apply for a work authorization under the financial hardship. Not many people know this, but uh, we, our firm has assisted many uh, students uh, to get a work authorization during, the, during their education. So these are the things about yes. F1. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Kaviti, you just said that there are a lot of restrictions for someone who are on the F1 visa. So you just said that, you know, they, they can only do the campus placement jobs. So uh, let us say that, you know, somebody is trying to get their H1Bs after the F1 and they're not getting it. And, you know, they're not able to like uh, get the uh, H1Bs. So uh, you were saying, you know, what happens a lot of times is that people illegally do other jobs and there are many chances of their visas getting cancelled. There are even times that they get deported. So can you just tell the viewers about the dangers of how, you know, your whole life can turn upside down if they don't follow the rules and regulations of the F1 um, properly in USA? The first and foremost thing is they have to be in the classroom. 20 hours a week, and two, uh, they have to work inside the campus. Number three, they should maintain their um, credits. You know, they cannot fail. If you fail two times, they can terminate you from the school. And uh, four, uh, don't drink and drive. And five, don't do drugs. Uh, six, don't work outside the, uh, you know, campus without authorization of your CIS. And, um, you know, seven, don't get involved with uh, drug deals or even uh, sex trafficking or, you know, things like that, because moral interpreted offenses are seen very seriously in America and don't steal uh, goods. A lot of our young kids, they think it's a fashion. They go to big uh, stores and they steal jeans. And we have had a lot of girls also got in trouble. A lot of boys got in trouble. So things like that, don't do it. If you do it, uh, the immigration is reporting to the consulate and the consulate is revoking their visas right away. If there's a revocation of visa, if you get caught, even if you are hit some woman or if you hit some man, things like that, moral turpitude offenses, um, say, things like uh, stealing, things like drugs and those things, hitting a woman or hitting a man, things like that. And even drunk driving, don't do that. If you do those, if you get caught in those things, you know, your visa get terminated. It's very difficult to get your visa back and you will be arrested and you'll be sometimes deported back to. Yes. Uh, so, Kaviti Garu, let's talk a little about the H-1Bs. Um, you know, the H-1Bs are the visas that you get after, you know, you, you are hired from an American company. So, let us say that, uh, you know, they got their H-1Bs. For how long can they stay in the country? Is it, uh, is it uh, till they uh, work to that specific company or then do, do they have like a time limit? Well, the H-1B is initially granted for three years and extended for another three years, as everybody knows. Uh, but uh, you can st you can stay in the country more than that because if any company has filed your labor certification or if your immigrant petition has been approved, people can stay longer until they adjust their status. Uh, the law says that you have legitimate expectancy. It's not a right, but you, because you have a legitimate expectancy to live in the country, you can extend your stay. So that's a typical thing. And uh, many times people also, you know, they, if they have invented something or if they have um, invested a million dollars, you can also get a green card to that too. Yes. Uh, so my question is that, uh, Mr. Kaviti, let's say that, um, uh, you know, they were hired in a one specific company and they were terminated. So let's say they lost their job or they've, they've decided to change the companies. So in that way, will the H-1Bs get affected too? Because the employer 
uh, also uh, fl- you know applies for the H1B. You know that's when you get different kind of certifications. So if that changed at companies, is there any other changes that happens to your H1B visas too? Because the H1 is granted for a specific employer. If you're changing the employer, you have to definitely report to the immigration. What does it mean? And the new employer has to file your petition. New terms and conditions. Sometimes the wage might be different. Sometimes the place where you're going to work is different. Sometimes even technology, you know. Sometimes you they, you might have a lesser salary from earlier company. Sometimes, uh, you know, you might have more salary. Sometimes you might have stock options. There are so many things, terms and conditions. Um, because where the terms and conditions have changed, uh, new H1s have to be filed and uh, and the new employer, a labor yeah. certification and new terms and conditions, a new state, you know, for example, if you're working in California, you lost job, maybe some New York company gave you a job. So you have to apply for a new labor certification and each one B. Yes. Uh, so, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kaviti, first of all, is a six year limit uh, for the H1B? First of all, is that true? And if yes, how can one uh, get qualified to extend their stays after six years uh, for the H-1Bs? The only way you can extend your stay by an employer filing a labor certification or by an immigrant petition. Um, otherwise, you can't stay more than six months. You know, sometimes people, you know, they, they get into, again, they change their status from H-1. Sometimes they even get married. I mean, you know, they get married to a U.S. citizen. And sometimes they have their own family, like parents or brothers and sisters, some family members who file immigrant petitions. So they can also change the status. Sometimes people invest money. You know, they can also change the status. So, you know, these are the categories where they can change the status and stay in the country. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Kaviti, let's talk about green cards. So, you know what happens a lot of times is somebody who already has a green card, uh, they sponsor their spouses. So, for someone who are on uh, the non-immigrant visas like the L1 visa or the H1B visa, so how can they change or terminate, uh, you know, uh, get their green cards in what ways can they apply for green cards? Is there any important details that you want to share? Well, when you're on a dependent visa, when you're because it's called derivative status, when the husband files their green card and it is the obligation on the husband to file the wife's uh, green card as well and the children. Many times I get phone calls asking, oh, my fa- husband has filed a green card, but he didn't file our applications. Uh, he did not file our children's application. That means it's a bad um, situation. You won't get your green card through your husband. And uh, sometimes they will say, oh, they said that they will file a green card after I got it. That's called follow to join. So in that process, the green card gets delayed. Follow to join gets delayed. So the the most important thing is when the husband is filing, they should file their wife and children. And that's that's the only way. That's the only way they get their green cards. And any benefits, even work authorization and everything. See, when you file a green card, you might not get it right away. It might be two years or three years waiting period, but at least you get a benefit of uh, traveling and uh, you get a benefit of work authorization and uh, you might be able to start up your business and you might be able to buy a house and do a lot of things. You might want to go back to school. You want to maybe change the profession. You might want to take some licensing exam. There are some licensing exam they won't even allow you if you don't have a green card. For example, if you're a dentist or uh, some professions, you need to have a social security number to take their licensing exam. So there might be some, um, you know, uh, wives who are citizens, I'm oh, sorry, who are doctors or pharmacists and physiotherapists and some, you know, lawyers, even accountants. If they won't take the licensing exam, if they get a green card of work authorization, they can take the licensing exam, get a job, and they can be on their own. So things like that. So it's better to apply through spouse when husband is filing. Or even for that case, if the wife is filing, the husband and children has to file. It is the obligation on the sponsoring spouse. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Kaviti, let's say that uh, there's nobody available for the sponsorship. So, let's say there's no one from the family um, 
who is like willing to sponsor them uh, especially for the employment based uh, visas so is there any way that they can you know apply for a green card and if yes how long will that particularly take now that we take into consideration there've been a lot of changes for the in the visa and the immigration processes especially after covid so according to you what's the situation right now some people you know if there's no employer if they are extraordinary ability they can also file their green cards sometimes you have a post doctorate doctorate and if you have some inventions and um, you know some people who are um, you know there's a there's a national interest waiver you can also look into that um, your viewers can look into that and there's some areas you know they they need green, people uh, you know apply to apply for green card so there are many ways uh, people do apply sometimes you know what happens i have clients those who are on h ones or student visas they study theology and they go back to study uh, you know study of divinity christianity and once they do that uh, they're engaged in some religious denomination here they might get an r1 and immediately after one year you can apply for a, a green card so like that there are many categories uh, where people can avail those facilities and um, you know marriage is one thing which i said to you um, you know inventions are the things and extraordinary ability or changing the profession even some professions you know you can get into those professions and you might get as i said to you just now uh, being an, a religious worker that you might you know i had a client who was at an h1b who was an IT programmer, but he's a priest from back home. So he was doing uh, some work in the temple uh, while he was in an H-1B. He got so involved and he became like a second priest. And uh, the, uh, ch the the temple wanted to sponsor him for R1. And he got his R1 instead of H1. So within two years, you can get your green card through R1 visa. So there are different types of getting green cards. It's not only just one way through employment. You know, people through uh, investment also, they do it. So there are many ways uh, they can get. So they have to get in touch with some local immigration lawyers so they can get some advice. Case to case is different. Yes. And also, I think uh, the viewers must know that it's also very different for from state to state because uh, U.S. is a, a you know had a, has a federal government and you know uh, every state has different uh, laws and rules and regulation. Okay, now ne getting back to the next question, uh, Kaviti Garu. Uh, so let's say somebody is on a tourist visa and they have applied for their ex extension for the second time and it gets denied. So after it is denied, what is the process like? What are the restrictions that they might face uh, if they are staying back in the country? If they want to challenge the decision, that's called you have to file a motion to reopen. It is not an appeal. You can only, what is the meaning of motion to reopen? Uh, the, in simple English, motion means a petition, an application to reopen the case. So you can file a motion to reopen. You have 30 days to do that. And if you want to go back, you have a reasonable time to leave the country. The reasonable time is 30 days. They can leave the country. And once they leave the country, when they're returning back again, then there might be an issue. Why? Because once the application, extension application is denied, that is denied retrospectively, not prospectively. What does it mean? This is a legal term. What does it retrospectively means from back when you applied? Let's say, Somebody came in January, um, you know, 2023, and the immigration officer gave him six months visa to stay in the country. So he went and applied an extension for six more months. He would say that I want to see Christmas and New Year in America. So the immigration might approve until, let's say, 2024 January. So before your expiration, you go and file another six months. Let's say you go and file an application again in and December 2023 for another six months because the loss is only six months under the extraordinary circumstances you can apply for another extension. Let's say you filed another extension in December 2024 for another six months. So after four months, you get to hear from immigration saying that your second extension is denied. And let's say you got this message from uh, USCIS in April. So what does it mean? Your application is denied from December 2023, not from March. That is called retrospectively. That means you're already in the country illegally for four months. 
so you better leave the country. So that's called retrospective effect, not prospective. Not from the time the April application is denied, the time is counting from April. No, it's the time is counting from retrospectively, that is from December. So you have a risk of uh, you're running into a bar, then you should leave the country because if you stay more than six months, uh, you'll be barred from coming to states for 10 years. It's a penalty. So, you know, most of the times when they go and speak to a lawyer, they say, hey, leave the country as early as possible. So when you're coming next time, you should bring in all the documents to show that you're bona fide, you made an application, but the application got retrospectively denied. So you want to, you, you did a bona fide, you made an honest and good faith application, but so for some reason, immigration was not convinced. So you have to be able to justify the board of entry officers when you're coming back again. So that's all it is. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Kaviti, let's say that somebody on tourist visa are applying for their extension the second time. So first, my first question is, do they have any limitations of the number of times uh, they're applying for, a, uh, for an extension? And also, if yes or no, please explain a little about it. Only, I mean, you can apply first uh, as a for right for six months. And sometimes under the extraordinary circumstances, you can apply for a second time. The so maximum period is only two times. One year, you can stay in the country on a visit. Not more than that. Yes. Uh, so let's say that somebody has come on a, a visitor visa or a tourist visa and they've decided that, okay, no, listen, I want to like maybe study here. I want to stay back and I want to study here. I maybe get their F1 visa. Is it possible in that way? Any, uh, you know, or do they have to face any other uh, legal issues if they decided to do that? Oh, we, I mean, many uh, clients, I mean, I must tell you this, I came on a visit visa to America and I got my extensions <laughs> and I got my student visas, got my H1 and green card and citizen now. So the law is very clear. You can apply for change of status from visit visa to a student visa. I pursued my law, so I applied for an F1. And after my graduation, so one law firm sponsored me for an H1. They, uh, there, you know, I got my H1. And then after that, uh, I got my green card and citizenship. So the law says, yes, you can make an application within stipulated time. From visit visa, you can apply for an F1. And once you graduate, once you complete your studies, if any employer is willing to sponsor you for an H1, you can do an H, get an H1B. And if somebody is willing to marry you, you can also get a green card through that. And um, if you want to stay back in the country, uh, get an H1 and get a green card also. From green card, you can also get citizenship. Many times when people get married also, after three, four years, if you're an H-1B or a student visa, if you're married to a U.S. citizen of more than three years, you can even apply for a citizenship straight. Yes. Uh, so, so, Mr. Yeah, please continue. Yeah, so there are many ways they should uh, get in touch with some competent immigration lawyers in their own area. Um, you know, they will be able to advise. Yes. Uh, my question to you, Mr. Kaviti, now is that, you know, you said you yourself were on a visitor visa, but what is the situation right now? Uh, you know, how is the immigration, uh, uh, you know, how are the rules have changed? Do you think right now somebody has decided to come visit USA, they want to, to do uh, the uh, change of status? How is the situation right now? What can a person expect now? Our firm does this. A lot of lawyers do that. And we always uh, file in changes of visa extensions, extension of stakes, applications, and um, we apply a lot of companies also sponsor somebody who's on a visit visa also, they sponsor H-1Bs. Somebody who's on a visit visa, they also get an F-1s, they can also get H-1s. Sometimes they even establish a company and get an L-1s. Somebody, they sometimes they even get green cards through marriage, sometimes through their families. Uh, our firm has handed a lot of uh, parents who came into US on a visit visa, the sons and uh, daughters, they're US citizens, they even sponsored green cards. We got green cards for their family, mother, father. So you can, there are many ways you can get, uh, there's no limitation, every law firm does that. Our firm also, they do it all the time. And people also get into even English courses. They don't have to be a university course, they even get into a, an English course and they also get an F1. And after that, they also go into a bachelor's degree. They also get into a master's program, sometimes doctorate program. 
you know, depends upon the client to client. They always accommodate U.S. immigration law, accommodates everybody, and um, you can get your visa changed within the stipulated period of time. The minimum period you have to have is 60 days to 90 days. If you're on a visit, you want to change your status, you have to approach an immigration lawyer, uh, Im approach an immigration 90 days before your expiry of your status. You can make an application. 90 days is a key. 60 to 90 days is a key. Uh, you have to apply. And once you apply and immigration takes its own time, you pay the fees, fingerprint, all the required documents, they will start processing. Once you get a receipt from the USCA, that means your status is legal in the country. You're not illegal. Even after the uh, that six months is gone, you are still legal in the country because you made a bona fide application and you made a good faith, a good faith effort. You paid the fees and your intention is uh, bona fide and good faith and legal so you can stay in the country. Yes. And finally, uh, Mr. Kaveti Garu, let's talk about people with, uh, you know, any kind of visas and that extension have uh, was denied. So how long can they stay back in the country legally? Well, only uh, reasonable time, 30 days. Otherwise, um, you know, they'll be subjected to bar. And if they get arrested, they'll be deported. So it's a very okay. risky thing. Yes, sure. Thank you so much, Mr. Kaveti Garu, for tuning on uh, onto our show. Uh, we covered so many different topics. I think this was very informative today. Thank you again to the viewers for tuning in. You're watching Sakshi TV with me, Shivani Raj. Thank you, Shivani.